Hi, Hi guys. guys, and welcome to a Disney World travel day. What is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Brianna. And I'm Corey. And where are we going, Corey? Um, I believe Walt Disney World, Brianna. Can you confirm? I can indeed confirm because I've spent months planning our trip and you just and get to I've tag spent along. Months doing nothing. <laughs> we are so excited. We ended up waking up this morning at around 425, 430. Threw some quick curls in my hair. We packed the car. We got up. We're at the airport. We've got some Starbucks. I got a pumpkin spice latte for fall. And then I got Corey just a venti cold brew and we got some breakfast. We're ready to roll. It is 6.35. We start boarding at about, do you remember what time they said we board? 10 minutes. Yeah. I think it's like 6.45. We're flying Southwest. We've never flown Southwest to Disney before, but I mean, a plane's a plane. Hey, you know I mean? and free check bags are free check bags. And so, yeah, and we are You know, girl golfing. math is all the rage now. Yeah, girl free math is bags. the rage and they're free. And we ended up doing Southwest because Corey really wanted to golf on this trip. So because we were able to fly Southwest, we could bring his clubs and it saved us a ton of money. So we are ready to head off to Orlando. What is one thing that you're looking forward to today? Oh, today? I yeah, not for the trip, the trip, just like one day at a time. Oh, um, food and wine. Yes. Yes, eating. I think... I'm also most excited for food and wine because we're going to Epcot tonight just to enjoy food and wine. Every time we do a festival, we just tack it on to an Epcot day and it just gets really elongated and busy and chaotic. So we're just going to enjoy an Epcot night. And Food Network Corey coming out. And Food Network Corey so is going to be coming out. We're going to have to start looking at the foodie guide. But if you are new to the channel or you're enjoying the travel vlog or excited for a travel day, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button down below. And turn on your post notification bell so you never miss any of the upcoming Disney vlogs. We've got an 11 vlog series coming. Our largest one to date. We're going to do vlogs every day. And then we're also going to be doing a what we spent in a week and a Q&A. So we've got a lot of stuff coming. I'm so excited. But without further ado, let's Let's head to Orlando. You know when you see this site and the green carpet, you know what? What does that mean, Corey? We made it. Yes. To Pop Century, we could not be more excited to be here. I am just like, I'm just so happy. It feels so good to be back. I love being back. There's nothing better than just checking in, getting your room, knowing that you're ready to get settled, and I am just like elated, and it feels so good to be back with Corey. The weather right now, is miraculous. there's not a cloud in the sky. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Disney just knew that they wanted to launch us Absolutely. into the most perfect week vacation does it feel what how does it feel for you to be back because you oh, haven't been back since may it feels amazing when yeah. you hit the lobby and you just get the lobby scent whatever yeah the hits pop you in the lobby. face it's, it's like home for us like we're, we're constantly at mm -hmm. pop because we love that it's on the skyliner we love that it's a value resort and we love to stay also deluxe and try new things but mm -hmm. it's so nice to have a little bit of a money saver but it is 12 20 we're finally at our hotel but i want to just give like kind of a quick tip i think is when we first got to pop we like walked in and a cast member came up to us and was like hi how are you guys have you checked in yet do you, have, do you have your room number and we said no and she was like okay if you want to go put your bags with all services and in the back of my head I was like wait Corey and I like to ask 
the hotel if there's either a rooms ready or to be near the skyline. Well, I was genuinely confused with you because you literally just went straight to Bell Services. So yeah. I was like, that's not ever what we did. Yeah, ever, but I just felt like, was she guiding us there? Did mm -hmm. she not want us to go in? But I ended up going into the, like, Bell Service, not Bell Services, but I main ended up lobby. going into the main lobby for customer service with the cast members. And I was like, hey, um, we're here. We're celebrating, you know, 365 days until our wedding and we're here on vacation. And I was just wondering if there's any possibility that there's any rooms ready that are close to the Skyliner. Like, mm -hmm. we would love to be close to the Skyliner if possible. And she was like, yeah, sure, let me see what I can do. They had a room that was ready. It's not in the 60s, but I can also, like, turn the camera quick. Like, literally, oh, it's all, like, bleachy white. Can you see trees. it? It's like, it's like, yeah, it's all blurry white, but, like, that is the Skyliner right there. So it's probably, like, a three-minute, two-minute walk. It's, like, literally right behind the yo-yo. Yep. So we're so close. We're on the ground level. We've never been on the ground floor before when it comes to being at a Disney hotel. So we'll definitely, like, take you all through what it's like to just be on the first mm -hmm. floor. No stairs, just kind of like lingering back to your room. We don't have to worry about elevators, none of that with our bags, which is really great. Thank goodness. Yeah, so we're gonna do a quick Pop Century room tour, but for reference, we are, hey, get your feet out of my way. Excuse me, you have me squat, so that's my stance. I stand literally like this. Well, maybe you should just shrink a little. It's not my fault that you're that tall. Maybe you should go a little. I can't. You're a my attitude's big enough. <laughs> You say you're a we, big girl, but physically. Yeah, but physically, I'm tiny. We are in room. Corey, what's our room number? Hold on, let me turn the camera. So, our room number is 6132. What's your key phrase? What do you always say when we give a room number? So, send us anything if you want. Or, or if, if you want to send us any mail. If you want to send us any mail. All right, Corey, go ahead, do the honors. Corey's little golf Mickey. I know I'm going to get a ton of questions on Corey's shirt. Corey's shirt is from the Palm Beach Golf, or the Palm, no, what is it? The Palm Course just, just Golf the Course. Palm Beach. Okay, you're confused. It's from the golf store. Okay. All right, so just a quick little pop century room tour. We have been here a ton of times, so we've got a lot of room tour vlogs, but Corey, take us away on a quick two-minute pop century room tour. Space. Yes. Okay. Um, here we have our trundle bed here, but that's never coming down. Yeah, we never use we it. We are going to be using rising the table. Yeah, I love using the table. You have some storage on this side, a depth room wherever needed. We tend to put our crossbodies there. Yep, outlets, extra plugs, especially for me, like with my camera and stuff, it's nice to just utilize that. And then if you spin over here to your right hand side, little coffee. Cooling. Yep, beverage drinks, cooler. Beverage cooler, coffee station, extra storage. This is going to be where we're Oh, no, we're not. We did not get water this time. We, at the last second, just made the switch and not yeah. get water. But, TV for all of our cartoon viewing pleasure. Yeah. Bed where the sleeping happens. Yeah, where the sleeping happens. Wait, you know what I just realized about this? What's that? This is probably one of our last times seeing Tata and Woodbine Tata Party. And Woodbine, yeah. Because eventually it will just say the Tata. Woodbine Party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I've got the bling to prove it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then you've got a nice bed here. There's a lot of extra pillows. We can put them in there, but we just tend to like throw them on the ground or like snuggle up with them. And then you've got your bathroom. A little bit of closet space, not too much, but I think just, you know, enough if you're not looking for anything drastic. And then you've got bathroom, the sink, fun times. One sink is normally kind of a pain for us to get ready because we prefer to do, like I like to have my own sink. And then you've got your nice toilet, shower. They're phasing out the H2O products, but I love them. So I'm hoping that they keep them for just a little bit while longer. So that's a little Pop Century room tour. We are so jazzed and so excited to finally just be back. And this is a nice redo because last time we were here, it was the hurricane. So it uh, feels yes. good. It feels so good to actually just be back. We're gonna unpack, we're gonna get settled. But we wanted to just do a quick touch base and a big thank you to Mirrors Transportation. They actually hosted us to bring us from the airport to our hotel. And then they're also gonna be picking us up from our hotel and then bringing us back mm -hmm. to the airport later on. So a little like spark note about what Mirrors is. They're basically the new Disney's Magical Express. So they are a bus company. They pick you up from the airport, they bring you to your hotel, and then they do the exact same thing on the way home when you're going back to the airport to make sure that you get there. They bring your luggage on the bus. It's just a really seamless process. But do you want to start with all the seamlessness of just starting mirrors and like how we got there? Yeah, one of the major pros that we had was it's simply you just walk up to the counter and scanning a QR code. So and easy. Then based off of the resort you're staying at, that I'm assuming you put that information in to begin with. Yeah. They automatically know what line you have to be in. They're just like, oh, you're in line, whatever. We were in line WDZ. Yeah. But they had like all these random lines. But that was the line that we were in. And 
I think we waited what all of eight minutes. Yeah, and it was then eight. We were on. So the minute that we stood in that line to the minute we got onto the bus, it was eight minutes. And then from there, we ended up sitting on the bus while the bus driver got everybody on the bus, loaded all of our bags on the bus, and we were on the bus for ten minutes. Then, and then from the minute we backed out of the airport and got to Pop Century, it was about thirty-eight to forty minutes. I forget exactly what my stopwatch said, but it was a pretty like decent amount of time. But I would say pros of mirrors and I think there's also cons so I think we can start with the cons and end on the pros mm -hmm. the cons are there's a few little like missed signs so you have to make sure that you're in the right terminal like what terminal did we land in we land in a and I'm not saying that this may be a mirrors fault this very well just could be could be the airport, airport yeah. fault but in we land in terminal a we apparently had to be in terminal B but that was never made known and there's multiple signs within terminal a that's saying like hey this direction for mirrors and where you go to the signs yeah. don't point to mirrors at all and then we realized that we needed to be in B so we would just need that to be updated in MCO yeah because there was it wasn't just us that was confused no there was like a lot of parties that were confused and I would say the other con is something again that can't be controlled but it's just like the timing right it's like you've got to wait eight minutes for your bus then 10 minutes on the bus then 35 to 45 minutes to your resort mm -hmm. and when I get here I just want to like get in an uber and go yep. however the pros are the reason why we decided to take mirrors and utilize mirrors was because Corey brought his golf clubs and it would have been really difficult to try to get an Uber XL with two check bags, two carry-ons, two backpacks. You just never and know clubs. what kind of vehicle you're gonna get. So and we didn't want to like roll the dice and risk it. So for that, I think mirrors is great. And I think if you want to save some money as well, it's only sixteen dollars per person per way. So for per adult. Oh yeah, per adult. For it's cheaper it's for kids. So for us total, it was sixty-five dollars. Of course, they ended up hosting us, so that wasn't what we paid. However, it was just really great to try mirrors out and use it. I think. If you want to use mirrors in the future, absolutely. I think it really was a nice service, but I think for us in the future, depending on when we come and the amount of luggage will really yeah. depend on if we use it because I would have liked to get here a little speedier, <laughs> but you can only do that with an Uber. You can't do that with a bus service, which yep. we totally get. However, it really was so easy for them to just like load the luggage and get on the bus and not have anything to worry about. Yep. So we're going to unpack this room because it's time for us to unpack, get some lunch, get our resort mugs, have fun, do all the things. So with that being said, let's unpack this room. All right. So we've heard rumor that there's no resort TV and no music background. So Corey said he is going to try it. What do we have? So it looks like it's just. We have resort TV and a music background. Oh, but the music is it's maybe towards re geared hotel. towards this resort, yeah. like this hotel. Yeah. Oh, that's still pretty cute. And we're staying in the 70s. Yeah, so that works. So that is really cute. Oh, I love that. Okay, sounds good. Hi, kids. Hi, kids. We are. Um, wait, did you say that because my mom says that to Always. us? Always. My mom always says like, hi kids, or when she's looking for us. But we are headed over to the Riviera for Bar Riva for lunch, which we were like, oh, do we want to do Bar Riva this trip? We loved it so much. The answer was yes. And because we kind of had to the like- The answer was why is that a question? Yeah, why is that a question? But we also had to kind of like strategically plan when we were going to go because we have free kind of time for lunch right now. So it makes the most sense. We're on the hunt, guys. We're on the hunt for the bright green and bright pink, like Buzz Lightyear, Pixar resort mug. They have the Disney 100 and I'm not a purple girly and Corey is definitely not a purple guy So we just like I just do not want that mug So we were just gonna get them at Pop Century, but they didn't they only had the purple ones So our goal is instead to go to Riviera and see if they have them so to Riviera and let's manifest a better mug You guys, we have made it to Bar Riva. We waited a little while for a table because it was so busy. We think everyone sat at the same time, but you know the drill. If you watched our last travel vlog, we ate at Bar Riva for lunch and now we are obsessed. I've been dreaming of the sticky chicken wings since we left. 
We got the mushroom arancini and then we got the burrata with focaccia and heirloom tomatoes. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I also got a strawberry daiquiri today because I was just in the mood. Corey, what was your drink again? The Le Petit Fleur. I feel so I get that all the time. Yeah, all the time. So Corey, I don't even know, what are you doing? Posting on Insta? Yes. Corey's just in his influencer era, I guess, but we are gonna dig in and have some lunch. I am so excited to be back at Bar Riva. All right, like Corey said, lighting's a little wonky, but we're rocking with it. And we are starting with, oh yeah, give it to me, the chicken wing. Also, I'm like, it's kind of blurry. Wait, cheers to a beautiful start to the Disney Bay K. Cheers, everyone. Just as delicious as I remember. Go ahead, have, Food Network, Corey. And I had the radish with it, so it gets a nice crispness. Oh, I want to have a radish with mine. Oh, yeah. So, so good. Hi everyone, we did a little rest, recharge, so after Bar Riva, we, what did we do? We walked around the Riviera. Just literally walked around the Riviera. Um, we tried to a lovely cast member named Joyce for oh, yeah. a few minutes. She was really sweet. And then we just came back and relaxed. We both saw, looked at each other yeah. during lunch and just said we need to lay down. And I just took like a 15 minute cat nap and I feel like I slept for literal days. Like I can't nap, which is terrible. Yeah, But I, I feel can. great. You nap at the pool though. You can do a pool nap. I, uh, laying on my stomach, I can. Yeah, like yes. you absolutely can. So then I ended up just like editing some other like YouTube stuff that I had to do, and it was nice, very needed, much needed recharge. But we're headed into Epcot tonight because we're gonna do food and wine, just like for dinner and to relax and enjoy Epcot, do some shopping because we never actually get to enjoy an entire festival. So we're yeah. headed off to Epcot now, and let's see, let me just triple check the time. It is 5:10, so we're headed in to Epcot for the night. We're gonna do an early night, like we're not gonna stay for the fireworks, we'll probably leave right around like 8.30, 8.45, like right before they start, just so we well, can we get back early. we do have a early. Guardians reservation. But between 7.30 to 8.30. Yes, so we're gonna take it at 8.30. Oh, okay, well I guess we won't be leaving right at 8.45. Oh, I thought that's what you said you wanted to do, so. Well, I haven't decided, I guess in this moment, we're not on the same page, huh. but it'd be what it be. I'm ultimately the one that's in charge, so whatever I say goes, and like I said, now we're off to Epcot. So we've got some pretty, Sunny lighting, and of course, we're starting food and wine on a trash can because where else would we on literally trash can. eat food and wine? So, sorry, we're gonna have some really weird lighting. Let me show you what we got. So, we started in Mexico. This is the what was Tostada it? Tostada de carnitas, braid pork on a fried braid. You mean braised? <laughs> Braised pork <laughs> on a fried corn tortilla with black beans that are not there. That are there. not there because I didn't want them. Avocado mousse, queso fresco, and chives. That is giving 10 out of 10 presentation. This one on the other hand, I don't know if it's giving 10 Taco out of 10. Taco de costilla, slow braised beef short rib on a corn tortilla with salsa de chile morita, avocado mousse, okay. and spring onions. All right, so we're just going to give them a go. This one is tacos. Is it really good? Is it good? All right, Brianna, dig in. Okay, I've heard that before. The braised pork is like that is so good. All right, so it's obviously a crunchy shell, which means I'm just gonna make an absolute catastrophic mess. That's why you're doing it first, so I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> oh, one oh, knows. The other one's already way better. Way better. Go ahead, give it a whirl. Chip salad. Well, it's difficult to eat. The other one's pretty bland. Yeah, it's super bland. Very bland. I like the trip though. That's nice. Yeah. Meat's good, fine. It's just blah. Blah. Brianna's washing down the blandness of the carnitas. That was horrid. Like, without a doubt, awful. I would rate the carnitas what, is a know. one. The carnitas was the first one no, on like the. No, that was the top. The tostada. Wait, I need to get my. Let me get my notes. Okay. The tostada de carnitas, zero out of ten. Like you couldn't pay me to eat it again. Wouldn't eat it again for. Giving it a one because I at least like the chip tortilla. Even that thing. like wasn't that great. Taco de costilla. Give that a four. That was tasty. I would eat that. Four again. out of five or four out of ten. Four out of five. Oh, okay. I'm gonna give it a four out of five too. I think it lacked a little bit in overall presentation, and I think well, there could a little bit nice. more meat and a little bit more onion because for seven seventy-five, I it definitely need, think there could have been more. It needed some freshness on it. Yes, like there they was. 
had a little bit of little onion, sprig. but that's that's yeah. it. Then and you need like cilantro. cilantro. There was like one little circular piece, but I think there just needed to be yeah. more. So we're gonna continue on food and wine. But I would say overall, the Mexico booth this year, like I normally we get like three. hit after hit. So I'm gonna just give it like a, give it a three. I'm gonna three out of five because yeah. the taco was really good, but the other one zero out of five, and then the taco four out of four and a half, four out of five, four out of five. Great. All right, you guys, we have made it over to Kenya. We ate at this booth last September, and I didn't love the shrimp last year, oh, I but I think I remembered liking the beef, so we're gonna give it a go again. I remember this being spicy, and I think that's why I you liked that, it. Yes. And then I remember just this being good, so let's give it a go again. We're going into the beef first. Brianna's so gracious enough to create my bite. All right, wait, let me get a bite quick, don't say it. Taste the coffee, yeah. which I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I think I like it. There's something sweet in there that is throwing me off too. I think I like it. I think there's opportunity in here for one that like pieces of beef I think to be smaller. It's like yeah, and you can cut it, it with a knife, it's but chewy, it's just, yeah, and it's chewy a little bit. However, whatever I forget what this is at the bottom. It's like a corn meal mash situation. Like that. That is a 10 out of 10 for me, that or that 5 out of 5 for me. So, I'm going to give this one, I think, a 3, 3.5. Because I think it is good, and I think I would eat it again. We're but... not doing point five, so I'm giving it a 2. Okay, so then I'm giving it a 3. Here, you can have the last piece of Brianna wants to be Food Network Brianna. No, I don't. Stealing my thunder. Alright, I'm just going to go in with just a piece of shrimp, just so I can see how it tastes, see if I remember it. I wouldn't say it's like revolutionary. I'm gonna give it like a two out of five. I think they're a little on the chewier side and I think there's a really big opportunity for really good shrimp at Food and & Wine and I think it's hard with shrimp though because the minute you cook them, they become chewy instantly so I think that's kind of the difficulty here but I'm gonna go 2.5 out of five. All right, Mr. Corey, go ahead and give it a whirl. This is not gonna be attractive. Oh, it's all right. All right, go ahead, give it a whirl, Cor. At first I was like, did you take the tail off? I was like, I hope to God he took the tail off or he's eating a shrimp tail. It's not the same, it's lacking something. I like yeah. the little kick that it has in the back of the tongue there. Yeah. It's just missing something. I think it's not, have, there's no freshness at all. It needs like a fresh you know, herb like or a something. Stuff, it's like sauteed. So yeah, it's not, like yeah. I gave it a two. Yeah. All right, on to the next. We ended up going to the Alps and getting the dark chocolate fondue, and Corey got a key lime People, little beer. We all know Corey lime loves the key Radler lime. From the Alps pavilion yeah. section. Well, Alps booth. Sure. Yeah. Insanity. Yeah. I'm upset I got the six ounce and not the 12 Not the big one. He was but like, I'm I nervous, made a responsible I'm not going like Because if I didn't like it, yeah. I was not wasting money on a 12 ounce. So that was smart. But we're going to dive into this fondue. Five fifty. This might be like the best, best price deal. deal of the fest. Can I have a fork? Fork. All right. Why don't we go in together? I'm going to go for... What am I going to go for? I'm going to go... Oh, I was going to oh. go for a cake thing too. Why yeah. don't we do the cake? Yeah, okay. Let me just... Oh, breaking. making a mess. Sorry, everyone. All right. Go ahead and give yours a dip. And then just, it's gonna have to go in fast because it drips. Yep. All right, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Mm. Wait, is the chocolate warm? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. That, get behind those. that is a five out of five. Oh, and that cake was just so moist. Oh my God. Sorry for that for term, but no, no, yeah. no, no, like it. For so five dollars? So soft. Wow. I'm really into trying the meringue in there. Oh, be careful. Is it gonna be hard? How am I gonna do that? Going for the meringue. Giving it a dip in the fondue too. Is this a bad time to say to Brianna that meringue is egg whites? It doesn't taste like <laughs> Alrighty, so we just went to Japan and got the, let me see if I can get it to focus, not on me, the fire spicy tuna sushi something. roll something. So we're gonna give it a go because I am in my tuna era. Like I enjoy raw tuna ever since trying it at, where do we try it? Haleo. Uh, Haleo. Haleo I tried it and I actually really loved it. So we are going to give it a go. This is a huge bite, but we're going for it. A 
spicy mayo. But that's it. Just one eat it. <laughs> Just use your fingers. Just one eat it even though it fell in the trash can. Oh my god. Can you please, for the love of God, use your fingers? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Brianna's 0 for 2 on handling, so I'm going to use my fingers. And Corey's mad at me. All right, we are just cruising away, but we just went to the grease booth, and this was, what was it, just literally grilled cheese with honey and pistachio? Yep. And this has been a repeat at Food & Wine for a few years, and we've never gotten it, but tonight, Tonight is the night we try it. Show them the goods. <laughs> really? Really? Oh, thank you. Wait, thank you. Hold on. I'm trying to go fast. So that you can get it. Oh my god, just give me the flower. <laughs> thank you. Five. Out of five. Six out of five. One of the best things I've eaten today. The saltiness from the cheese, the sweetness from the honey, and the crunch from the pistachio. The pistachio Outrageous. gives it five. just like a really nice, like, I love a pistachio. Five. It's got such a distinctive taste that it's just. Wow. That's so refreshing, too. That's weird. Right, you guys, we're on to our final food and wine item of the night because it is 7.28 and our Guardians group is going to be called at 7.35, so we just want to start making our way, but we got the falafel right here and then the pistachio cake. Corey, do you want to give the falafel a try first? People say this is like some of their best of the fest, so I'm excited because I know you also love falafel, so just give it like a nice big, and it's I, there's a lot of fresh veggies in there to my understanding. That's light, it's refreshing. The falafel has a nice crunch around it. Oh yeah? Flout on the inside. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. So light, so refreshing. Whatever that like garlic tahini on the top, like I want to bathe in it. And I also think the thing that I like is like, look at that huge, this like portion and just like niceness of freshness. So just 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 to the pita. Hi everyone, we are Hi, back. Everyone. Hi everyone, we are back from Epcot. It's such a fun, low key, not crazy night. It was really enjoyable because we just like bopped into Epcot. That was our first time really kind of taking advantage of the annual pass uh -huh. for that kind of realm. But I wanted to share the song that we got on Guardians. So we ended up getting Kunga, which, which is actually really cool because we never got we've it. We've never had it, so now we've had all, we've had five songs, we're missing just one, of course, which is September. September. I was dancing the entire time. That is by far the hands down best dancing song on Guardians, and I think my favorite song on Guardians as of right now. It's funny, I actually such a low expectation of how Congo was Congo would feel be on that ride yeah but it was insanely fun to yeah listen to. I liked it. we just had an absolute blast we're also exhausted don't forget we've been up since like 4 30 what time is it 9 30 so like we have two waters we're ready to get cozy in bed but I thought we could kind of end out the vlog here and if you're new to the series we always do our three favorites at the end of the day so I'm gonna go first my first favorite was just traveling here like I just love knowing that we're here. I would say my second favorite was lunch at Bar Reba. Like it was just so good and so nice to reminisce and go back there. And then I would say that my third favorite was getting conga on Guardians. Like I just yeah. thought that was a really, really good song. Corey, what were your three favorites of the day? I really liked the low keyness of us going to Epcot. Yep. Just, like, yeah, like we didn't eating. do any rides. We just like we bought just Genie. Bopped around, yep. which was very fun. Um I'm going to say Conga as well for so good. Guardians. And then... We're also walking if you have not realized the bouncing. No, we're on segways. We're, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're motorized. And then lastly, it's just simply being in Walt Disney World, yeah. really. It was just really good. So, we're ending staying. the vlog. Yeah, it's just like, we're ending it. It's getting crazy. It's getting chaotic. We're, we're both in our exhausted. Spotlight. Yep, we're in our spotlight. So, with that being said, if you are new to the channel, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button down below. And turn on your post notification bell so you never miss any of the upcoming Walt Disney World vlogs. We are back to Epcot tomorrow morning and studios tomorrow. So, we'll see you all tomorrow. And we love you guys so much. Have an awesome evening. See you tomorrow. Toodles.